Just because a car is small and inexpensive doesn't mean you have to sacrifice features, style, or ability to cart about some friends. The proof that can be seen everywhere you look in the subcompact car segment with numerous desirable models working hard to erase the negative memories often associated with this historically crummy vehicle segment. The 2015 Kia Rio is certainly doing its part. It stands out with its generous features list, surprisingly roomy interior, and grown up styling inside and out. So let's go ahead and check out this 2015 Kia Rio. Now as far as styling goes on the vehicle, I think it quite looks good and I think it looks better than the Rio's cousin, the Hyundai Accent. And it can look quite premium on the exterior when you go on higher end trims with LED daytime ring lights as well as LED tail lamps. But overall, it's a pretty stylish design. Now here's the key fob for the vehicle. Looks like it came straight out of the 90s. However, of course, a nicer key fob is available, like a smart key. But this is just your basic key since we have the LX trim here. It is a silver exterior color with a black cloth interior. Manual driver's seat adjustments, of course. Now stepping on into the interior here, it is a pretty low step in height and you're actually treated with a fairly high quality design here. It's very stylish and looks pretty premium given the price. However, it is lacking some convenience features including power door locks as well as power windows since we have the base LX trim here. Of course, those options are available as well as many other options including heated seats, um, a navigation system, a rear view camera of course. And what you're hearing is that 1.6 liter four cylinder. Now your standard transmission is actually going to be a six-speed manual transmission, however we do have the optional six-speed automatic. Now you also do have manual shiftability. Overall it's a pretty responsive transmission. A rear view camera is optional but we don't have it here. And let's go ahead and turn on the hazards. Like I said you do have manual windows. Go ahead and pop up the hood and check out the engine bay. Now you also do have 15 inch steel wheels. Halogen headlights with halogen daytime running lights. Very bold looking front end. Now under the hood you will actually find, like I said, the 1.6 liter four cylinder. This is your only powertrain available with, like I said earlier in the video, a six speed manual transmission or a six speed automatic. Now it produces 138 horses at 6,300 RPM and 123 pound feet of torque at 4,850 RPM. It is gas direct injection and expect EPA estimates of around an okay 27 in the city and 37 on the highway. Overall, it provides a decent amount of power comparing that to some even compact cars like the Nissan Sentra and the Toyota Corolla. It even has more horsepower than both of them. But overall, it's a pretty decent powertrain here. Now trims of the Rio start at the LX trim which starts at $13,900. Then you have the EX trim which starts at $16,940. And the SX trim which starts at $18,040. Now competitors of the Rio are the Toyota Yaris, the Chevrolet Sonic, Nissan Versa, 
as well as the Mazda 2. And now competitors of the Rio is the Nissan Versa, Toyota Yaris, Honda Fit, Chevrolet Sonic, Ford Fiesta, Mazda 2. Fairly, fairly crowded segment here. Total vehicle price is also at $15,915. Then like I said, EPA estimates are at 27 in the city and 37 on the highway. Rear reflectors for a more premium look. And I love how the taillight designs look. Not overdone, but simple and restrained and streamlined. Very handsome looking subcompact. Now like I said, you do have manual windows, however you do have power exterior mirrors. Armrest is hard to the touch, as well as the upper door panel, but that's pretty much to be expected in this class and for a base trim level. And let's go ahead and rev it up. Now, as far as build quality and materials go inside of this cabin here, materials are pretty average for the class. However, the plastics do have a pretty nice graining to it, I have to say, and it actually looks soft to the touch, while in some other cars, it actually has the look and feel of a scratchy, hard touch plastic, but this plastic actually looks high quality at least. Um, however, materials, I'm not expecting a whole lot. Hard plastics do abound everywhere. In this car but that's to be expected especially for a base trim level now the only thing i really have a complaint is that there is no center console armrest however that is available i just wish that would they would make that standard on cars nowadays now as far as build quality goes that is a different story build quality is actually excellent inside of this vehicle most cars in this class have build quality that's pretty mediocre I have to say and there's lots of panel gaps for example the Toyota Yaris however these there I don't find any panel gaps inside of this vehicle here and everything fits well and is very nicely put together for the most part now the 2015 Rio's 1.6 liter four cylinder is one of the more powerful engines in the class and overall acceleration is decently impressive for a subcompact the engine gets a bit noisy, however, during hard acceleration, and that, along with considerable amounts of wind and tire noise, keeps the cabin from feeling serene. Now, coming to the steering wheel design, I think it is a fairly high-quality looking steering wheel design and pretty stylish, especially for a base trim level. At least they do give you steering wheel mounted audio controls over here, and then you have your cruise control buttons over here. Now, you also do have a tilt steering wheel. Intermittent windshield wipers too. Now coming to your center stack controls, I love the center stack controls. It's very logically placed, very ergonomically correct of course, and very easy to use. It's what you would expect from a sub subcompact vehicle here with um, ease of use and no complicated controls. But I like the black part going surrounding the um, AC buttons because it definitely gives it a more high quality feel. But of course, you do have your fan speeds, your AC controls, your different zones, and your temperatures, of course. Your wheel window defroster, recycling, and your AC right here. But I love the design of this. Very high quality and stylish. 
Coming down here, you have your auxiliary input, your iPod USB integration, two 12 volt power outlets, a little storage cubby right there, some cup holders right here, and then a little storage cubby right there, too. Up here, you have your manual dimming rearview mirror. And then right here is where you will find your interior illumination lighting. Now coming over here, you have your traction control off button, the brightness of your interior illumination lighting, and then your active eco button for saving fuel. Now let's get to the main head unit here. This is your basic head unit. And an optional larger touchscreen interface is available. But overall, this works pretty well. You have your AM, FM, optical disk drive, CD player, Sirius satellite radio, which comes standard. Then right here you have your setup, you can change the display, the sound, the clock, the system. Coming to your menu, you have your information right there. And then you have your digital clock right here, and it actually shows the date too. And then you have your different media sources like your iPod, USB, and then your auxiliary input too of course. And then your presets are located right here. But overall it's a very simple system, very easy to use too. Now the Kia Rio is pretty competent around turns, but it's definitely not the best handling car in the class. In addition, the Kia's ride is kind of choppy, bordering on harsh, depending on the condition of the pavement. If a softer ride is important to you, the EX is likely a better bet. If you're looking for a small car that feels a little bit more sophisticated in the way it rides and handles, the Sonic and Fiesta are definitely worth a test drive. Now coming to the gauge cluster here, I love the gauges. They're very clear and easy to read, what you would expect from Kia. Pretty typical Kia gauges here, except for the needles. The needles have a very distinctive looking design to them, and I quite like them a lot. Now, coming to your little center screen right there, basically, that's going to show you vehicle information such as your trip odometer, and then your average fuel economy as well. Basic information, very basic. Now as far as the seats go, I think the seats are quite comfortable. They have a decent amount of side bolstering to them. And then also thigh support is adequate too. But overall, it's actually pretty comfortable in seating comfort. Now as far as visibility goes, visibility is okay out of this car. Outward visibility can be slightly better. However, there is a decent amount of glass area on the front windows. However, when you get to rearward visibility, you do have a pretty thick C-pillar which decreases the amount of visibility and can create a little bit of blind spots back there. And there's not a whole lot of glass area for the rear windows. Alright, and let's go ahead and shut down the Rio. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle, including the rear seat passenger space as well as the trunk. Build quality and materials do follow through in the rear, of course. Now sitting back here, it's actually decently roomy. The seats are actually fairly comfortable as well. And I'm actually quite surprised that they do give you dual map pockets back here. Even co some compact cars don't even offer that, even on their base trim levels. So, quite surprised there. But overall, it's actually a pretty comfortable experience back here. I wish they would make this armrest just slightly bigger though. All right. Now you do have a generous amount of cargo capacity for a subcompact. I'm actually quite surprised. The rear seats also do fold down to maximize cargo room too, 60-40 split. Very versatile. Full manual passenger seat. Manual recline too. Your glove box, nice and damped. Alrighty. So the 2015 Kia Rio is most certainly a solid pick for a small sedan or hatchback. It's not as quite as refined as some class leading rivals, but it might still win you over with its very inviting cabin, strong engine performance, and an excellent amount of value. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.